Through that. All right. I'd like to call the order of the regular meeting of the Algonac Board of Education for Monday, October 28th at 7 p.m. Please rise for pledge allegiance. A moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Jazz Pascoe? Here. Ray Primaloff? Present. Heidi Campbell? Charles Pusatel? Here. Bill Clark? Here. Sharon Stiltner? Here. Heather O'Neill Roberts? Here. Mr. President, we have a call. All right, thank you. Recognitions and presentations? Yep. Yeah. Well, uh, tonight is our annual budget presentation, and uh, Kenny's come through and given you a copy of uh, the report and what he's going to be going through today. Um, re really, this is just kind of an annual thing, is if you remember, we do kind of this time of the year uh, from last year's budget. So, Kenny, I'm going to turn it over to you, and if you need anything, let's. That's perfect. Expenditures of 
netted a $732,000 increase in your fund balance, ending at $821,000. And food service had revenues of $588,000, and expenditures of $597,000, which added a slight decrease in fund balance of $9,000, taking it to $196,000, netting the district's total fund balance to $3.9 million. And we turn to the next slide. Uh, just recaps the general fund only uh, revenues for the year of approximately $15.3 million. And this breaks down by source on where that revenue came from. The biggest chunk here is state aid through foundation allowance, uh, approximately 62%. Next biggest piece of the pie is your local revenues, your property taxes of 31%. And you see the slightly smaller 5% uh, of federal revenues and 2% of other miscellaneous revenues you received in the year. And then your next slide, you look at the opposite, general fund expenditures. Approximately 14.9 million. And this one's broken down by, sorry, I'll have to that. We're showing instruction and support here. 57% of the expenditures were from instruction. 39% were for support. We like to look at that as 57, 57 cents of every dollar was spent on the instruction side of things, and 39% was, or 39 cents of every dollar was spent on support. And again, 4% on other miscellaneous community service, other items in there. And the next slide, we then show the general fund expenditures by object code. And this is just a little different way to look at the expenditures. We're showing 44% of salaries and 31% of your benefits, which is the district's biggest chunk of expenditures. That's the case for every school district in the state of Michigan. Payroll is your biggest expenditure. And followed for Elgin Act, followed by purchase services of roughly 19%, and then 3% of capital outlay supplies other. Kenny, on that, the 75% then basically is salaries and benefits. Right. You said that would be right in line with what you so see? Typically, we'll see districts anywhere from 80 to 85%. It okay. Is the general um, average, I'd say, on where you see them. And the, for those that are slightly below, you would just see slightly more purchase services. You're just, right. instead of hiring a you're buying, right. paying for right. them. So that's exactly the case here. And then another piece of the audit, we look at the budget compared to what actually happened at the end of the year. And for the final budget for revenues, we budgeted for 15.6 million of revenue. We only saw 15.38, which was a slight under of $163,000. For expenditures, we had a final budget of 16.12 million, but we actually spent 14.9. So that was $1.2 million under budget, which for that, we just simply didn't spend what we thought we were going to, which is by no means a bad thing. The, net, the change in net assets, based on the final budget, we anticipated using $578,000 of the fund balance. Actual expenditures ended up giving us $482,000 to the good. So this was a good budget to actual. On our next slide, we're looking at the long-term debt for the district, which a big chunk here is the um, bond refundings for the district in the last couple of years. And one key piece to note here is that there was no state aid, no borrowing this year. It was paid off in the prior, the prior years was paid off and we didn't have to borrow this year, which is a good thing for the district. First time in a long time. Yeah. Yep. And your last slide, pension and OPEP. The district supporting a, their share of the pension liability of $23.6 million and their share of OPEP, li OPEP liability of 5.9, which this is just Algonac's piece of this, uh, piece of the pie from the entire state of Michigan, which for the pension liability is roughly $30 billion. <laughs> and for the OPEB, roughly $8 billion, which have changed slightly from the prior year. I know your, the 
OPEB has gone down from the prior year and pension has gone up. That's just based on market change, mortality rates. That's just what the actuaries come up with for the end of the year, um, which results in a negative net position of 25.7 million, which every traditional public school in the state of Michigan shows a negative net position. If the school were to close its doors right now, you would not be liable to pay this amount. The state of Michigan would pay it. So it's, for you, it's just never reported on the financial statements. It has no effect on your federal fund. So that concludes my presentation. I would just like to add my final remarks that as I've said through the whole presentation, this, this is a very good audit report for Dorothy and the Griffith's office. It was throughout the general well done. And we really appreciate the opportunity to come down here and do this audit year over year. It's a very good one for us. It's, it's very enjoyable. So thank you. Thank you. And at this time, if there's any questions. On slide six, where you've got the expenditures broken down between instruction and support, support could be anything from facilities to administrative to like anything that isn't a teacher teaching, basically. Aids. Okay. Secretary, Secretary support staff. Yeah. Got it. Okay. All others. Just mm -hmm. Other than. Yep. The other obligations, what are those in the uh, the debt? There's Long term a, debt. What makes that? It's a small amount, but just right. curious. Um, that'll be laid out in our report. I I didn't want to make an issue, I just was curious. It is part of the long term debt, it's just broken down that way. I have to find the note. Is that something we can email, Sean? Yeah, yes. yeah. You, you don't have yeah. to. I'll email the page. Okay. Anything else for Kenny? Well, I appreciate the good news this year. It seems, seems to be pretty good news anyway. Dorothy, thank you and yeah, for everything. Thank you, Dorothy and Al. Well done. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Nice job, thank, you. Right. thank you. Thank you. Thank <coughs> you. All right. Moving on to consent agenda items. Make a motion that the Board of Education <coughs> approves the all consent agenda items including agenda, minutes, personnel items, treasurer's report, and bills as listed, items A through D. Support. And moved and supported. Any comments? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And that passes. <coughs> and we've got our information items, 10 passenger van. Yep. Um, just something I wanted to bring to the board um, to discuss a little bit. So it's become pretty standard practice that districts have a vehicles and have um, ways to transport, be it staff or like in our case, um, I think a small groups, like if we go to Quiz Bowl or some of our smaller sports teams, cross country team, where we're only looking to transport six, seven, eight kids. Um, so Dorothy and I started to look around and we're trying to do a little bit of cost analysis of over the course of some years, would this save us money? We know it's a convenience. Um, and you know, then you get into the spring where there's uh, lots of buses going out and lots of field trips and sometimes either short drivers or short buses. Um, and so, and then other times, like I said, we pack up a big bus and we have six kids on it. And so we started looking at some alternate ways of potentially um, transporting some students. Also, like I said, things when we send six, seven teachers to a conference and everyone drives separate, you know, this would be a way that we could potentially do this. Um, the reason for the 10 passenger van is that is the maximum 
capacity that you can have in terms of transporting students. So there are such things as 15 passenger yeah, vans. Yeah. You could just take the seats out and made it. Yeah. Uh, but that that's one that we can so you can only transport technically your driver and nine other students. But again, it would be um, in in the long run probably quite a cost savings for us. Um, gives us some opportunities, like I said, to uh, not only transport staff. The one side of it is teacher does have to have a chauffeur's license or a coach would have yeah. to have a chauffeur's license to transport other people, which it's not a CDL, so it's really a pretty easy, I carry one on my license from when I transported kids years ago. Um, there's really not a whole lot to it. Uh, it's a few more questions that you have to answer when you go get your license renewed, basically. Um, so anyway, we started looking around a little bit. Uh, the cost on an item such as this is somewhere in the thirty-five to forty thousand dollar range. Um, again, something that we're looking at. I haven't done anything more than just price them out and start gathering the legal information about it. But it was something that I wanted to make you aware in case you had some opinions or some things that you thought. If you are looking, because I had a nine passenger before the fifteen passenger. Yep. And I got mine brand new for twenty-six thousand. Okay. I suppose we could do a, like a pro forma an R, ROI analysis or something to show how it pays sure. for itself. Mm -hmm. okay. Sure. Because they, they yeah. are, if you can find them, some of them don't want them on the lots because they don't sell that fast. Right. So you can sometimes get really good. Okay. Um, I know we went through, um, I had Mitch put together a list for me of potential, yeah. like okay. who would use them, and, and then like I said, there's some other things, but yeah, we could put together kind of a side by side on what it would cost mm -hmm. us if we took a bus or versus what we would pay for this. Were you looking at new, or yeah. is there such a thing as used or The used not? ones are harder to find, but if I mean, we're gonna they can do find it. They may not be. See, most of them are empty and they don't have seats in them the big vans like that because they make them more for like work vans like the transits oh, and so stuff like that so but they do paying. but they make them with the seats also you just have to it's because it's, it's not to put everyone's not going to want to buy a, huge a lot of vans. custom yeah but they do get them on their lots they do like sometimes like especially in the spring like want to get rid of the last year's model right like you would do a bid right yeah. well we through you have to because yeah. it's over the yeah. threshold mm -hmm. yeah. you just can't like buy it but no yeah. you have to take it's yeah, got a right. competitive process. Right. And they probably have to be approved. Which most districts are buying them on my deal because that process has already happened with certain, you know, vehicles for the state of Michigan. Uh, so, you know, that's what I'm seeing out on my list, sir. Uh, they're buying them for my deal because then you, you know, they, they're, they're a base item and then the additional Express. Items are bid as well, mm -hmm. so you buy up my deal, and that's that process has already been. Done. That's the bid; it's already been vetted right. that way. Now, I, I mean, obviously, we're looking for very basic. I mean, we're not going to do bells and whistles. It's no. just more one that, they like I said, yeah, they don't offer. Yeah, of I didn't figure. Transport students? Does it have to be handicap accessible or? That I couldn't tell you. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if I that, that's something I would have to look at to see if that was the case. Well, the ten student limit is that a function of the type of the the chauffeur license, or is it more like no chauffeur's license? You could transport, I believe, up to fifteen. That's just a transportation law from uh, state of Michigan that talks about yeah, for non buses. Law yes. For okay. Yep. And actually, I have that. Um, that part of the law, I could send that along to you, could, so you could see the wording on it. So, it, are there dean contract implications if you get? That's a, that's the other one I would have to look at because mm -hmm. I I know that um, that was that was a good question because that's something that came up even when we used to we looked at this years yeah, ago right. when we uh, were doing our own transportation. At that point, it was more of a union thing because in the bus driver contract, it mm -hmm. would say we can't farm out trips or hand out trips and if there's x amount of students going they have to go on a bus um, we're not bound by that with our people per se but mm -hmm. dean might look at it a little bit differently so I, it would definitely be something that i yeah. would again have to ask them about and see if there's anything in our contract that would make it where we 
can't use it. But I know, like, I, I look at the ones, some of the people around us that use vans, and they've got Dean contracts, too, so okay. there must be yeah. something. And then I look at, like, what you said, Risa has, like, five or six of them that they use to transport. So I don't know. Just like I said, something I thought might be a good cost savings and um, just a way to get our kids around and maybe sometimes save on a little bit of money on buses. And if we found what we were looking for, where does the money come from yep. to purchase it? General it fund. Yeah, it'd be a general, general fund, fund purchase. General yeah. fund. And I, you know, on Janice's comment, or that I think that should get looked at on the uh, handicap. Yep. You know, it, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I would have to. I would have to look into that and see if that's something that we would have to have. It's that comes with a world of complexity. Right? Sure. Yeah. The yep. Types of Good to check. Yep. Yeah, okay. you could have had twenty thousand dollars in that vehicle. It's got to be well, handicapped yeah. accessible. Right. Yeah. The, the last thought I had, like Chuck's comment about the, you know, like an ROI analysis or something that shows it, right? Is if we could just kind of forecast a day in the life or something, so we, so we know it would get used, right? Rather than investing in it, it sits around. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, like I said, I wouldn't put it together if I didn't think it was something used, that right. was gonna, you know. But we should show something like that for the community, so they know what we're, why we approved it. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So any yeah. rules about coaches transporting kids? As long as they have the chauffeur's license, I think they're, they'd be safe on that. Um, we, we actually, um, if you remember back, this now this of course was prior to Dean, um, we had coaches that were getting certified to drive bus because we were having, at that point, it was an issue of finding drivers. Um, that doesn't seem to be as much of an issue now. It's just more of a, is there a more cost effective way to do it or a way that makes sense where we always have a, vehicle that we can fall back to and would it make sense and to do it with a mm -hmm. like I said when I've taken kids to the state finals for wrestling and I only have four or five of them you know I mean yeah. instead of taking a bus or count on parents so that does remind back in the, in the policy conversations right we, there was one where you know can teachers right. give a student a ride right. home and things like that right we had a lot of debate yeah I'm just yeah. curious what what makes this different than that. Oh yeah, that's, more. that's what I was. Right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wonder where the insurance falls on that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. Yep. Good questions, and like I said, we'll get before we go and. Yeah, I think we ought to investigate it. Yep. Mm -hmm. For yeah. sure. Uh, makes sense. No push forward with it then. All right. Administrative reports. Yep, Mr. Melrose. Um, yep. A couple weeks ago, on the 16th, we had our NHS induction. Um, yeah, it's always nice to see uh, the, the students get uh, recognized academically. Um, again, traditionally, because we are a smaller school, a lot of these same students are, are athletes. Uh, they're participating in a lot of our extracurricular groups, and it's just a great group of, of young people. And uh, at the event, it was really nice. Uh, our officers, Anthony Robinson, Shayla Avers, Shelby Woods, Kellen Meadows, uh, Brandon Gandhi, all presented, and they did a very nice job. And uh, Lori Baker, uh, she did the, the speech, and she was fantastic. Yep. She did a really good it was job. awesome. It was, yeah. uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, tears there, I think, in the audience. Uh, it, was, yeah. it was very well received. Then the next evening, we had the junior NHS induction, again, which is all, and also just, again, it's a nice uh, ceremony for those students. It's neat to see those kids grow into, eventually, the NHS students. And, and again, seeing the young leaders and again, a, a bunch of the, the NHS officers came back and did their speeches the, that following night, which is, again, they did a fantastic job. Uh, that Friday, we had our, our, our academic awards from last year. Uh, again, when the students received their, their certificates, letters, uh, and medals for their jackets, and uh, also recognized for what their uh, students did, uh, achieved proficiency in all levels of the, of the state testing. Uh, last week, Thursday, we had our parent-teacher conferences. Uh, we had a Monday, we had a morning, afternoon, and evening sessions. Uh, it was pretty busy throughout the whole whole day. Um, it went uh, very well. We were pretty happy with it. And then this coming up this week, uh, tomorrow we have middle school band uh, in the in the gym. We have high school uh, band on Wednesday, both at 7 p.m. 
Uh, on Thursday, on Halloween, uh, it's one of my favorite days of the year when the daycare comes over, the trick or treats around the building. It's just fun to see the, the little ones in their, in their costumes. It's a great day. And uh, last but not least, uh, on November 21st, uh, NHS will have their first blood drive of the year. Thank you. Let's stage. All right. We had our fifth graders went to Howell Nature Center for camp on October 16th, 17th, and 18th. They had a great time. Uh, weather held out pretty much all, all except for the very first day, but um, I was able to visit on Friday. The kids and parents are always so happy. And, um, I toured the dorms this year. It was the first time I did that. I think I'll go from now on. It wasn't as rough as you think it would be. Um, we, had, we had conferences last week also. We're at about 98% of the teachers reached out and got in contact with the parents. We're working on a few still um, with just some family situations like illnesses and that. So we'll get those tied up this week. And That's also, great. Sixth grade band started today, and we have better numbers than last year. So I was pretty happy about that. At first, it seemed like they were dwindling a little bit, but uh, Mrs. Turner was able to pick a few up recently. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Mrs. Hanners. Uh, Millstead Elementary also had their parent teacher conferences. As always at the elementary, we try to get 100% of our parents in, um, either by getting them in or, or through phone conferences. So we're finishing up. Just a few, we had really good parent turnout this year as well. So that's been wonderful. Um, we have a therapy dog coming in every week. Murphy is coming in by... Um, Terry Stoneburner. Thank you, Terry. And she comes in um, on every Wednesday. One week she visits with kindergarten. Next week she visits with first grade. The kids get to go out and read to Murphy. They are truly enjoying that. Um, it's been, even teachers that were nervous about it look forward to the dog coming in. It's about half an hour in each class. Um, different students get to earn and read. They read in pairs and they pet them. She's, Murphy's a wonderful dog. So if you get a chance on a Wednesday morning, he's always there. Um, this week we do have a busy week. We have Halloween on Thursday, lots of things going on. However, our costume parade will actually be on Friday, that half day. That was at request of the teachers. Um, kids in their Halloween costume for an entire day is not something they were up to. So they said on a half day, let's do it then. <laughs> so um, we'll see how that goes this year. Kids are excited about it. And um, curriculum, we're going through the standards for social studies. They've been adopted, so we've done the crosswalk, trying to see which ones have changed or just moved grades, um, and what that's going to look like. We haven't got a lot of direction from the state yet of when that testing's going to occur. It sounds like they're going to similar to science, uh, marry the test together and pilot things for quite a few years before they actually implement the new standards. Also, all the recent consultants have been in through the high school, through Algonquin, through Millside. So lots of work going on there. We're really in the meat of teaching. We've got our preliminary testing. Um, NWA scores and so intervention groups have been formed and getting um, right into that teachers are in the need of it. Now with conferences we have our report cards coming to an end this Friday. It's the end of the marking period and report cards will go home next week. Susan. So I forgot to mention at my last board before you that we had licensing come in as our interim um, inspection and we did fantastic <laughs> made it for really easy. But she was just checking on the rooms to make sure that they're all well maintained and everything's going good. If we went ahead kids, she would make sure we're on ratio, which we always are. Um, we're getting ready for our great start to quality, our restart, our three rating for our stars. Um, so we have Beth Etcherberg coming from Great Starts. She's keeping us on track with that and we're getting everything uploaded. It's a new system this year, so we're kind of just kind of waiting to see how that's all going to play out because I don't even think they know. <laughs> preschooler um, parents did attend. Um, we're still missing quite a few of our infant toddlers even though we offer evening um, and early mornings for parents as well as phone um, conferences but we're not just getting them as much as I'd like to. Um, as Mr. Mello said we're coming for the Halloween parade this week. The kids are super excited. They're going to have a little party afterwards. Um, and our Thanksgiving feast is coming up. I'll um, be sure to send an email so you guys can all be invited. Um, it's November 19th. 
parents are invited. We bring a dish to pass, and we all kind of have a lunch together to celebrate Thanksgiving and have a time of togetherness, the whole building. So it's kind of nice. Very good. Thank you. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Any board reports? I have one thing. Um, St. Clair County at the board, they are interested in what you guys, who, what kind of speaker you would like for the winter or early mm -hmm. spring next meeting, like that we had the other night. Um, just they want ideas <coughs> of what you're interested in learning about, or there's. Are Republican? <laughs> <laughs> no, like you just. <laughs> If there's some kind of issue you want more information about, you know, yeah. they, they said that they've had, you know, like the, you know, the health department right. come in and talk about things, different, you know, speakers. So if there's mm -hmm. anything you guys yeah. think would be a good idea or you want to learn about, this, let me know, because they want to draw more people to the. Yeah. The one last week, I, I really like, I like that, her. you know, she came in and did yeah. a great job. She, she, she's very knowledgeable. Because I wasn't able to go. Yeah, it was just really what they, what the one, and they've done this in the past, the first one of the year, they generally have someone come from MASB and give an update on the budget. Pro well, in the this case, it yes. was, yeah, yeah. It, and it was really good because they, she had talked about, um, the decisions made with the budget why they were made and these types of things what's still out there that they're battling a little mm -hmm. bit um so so that was that was pretty uh informative i thought and then even talking about some of the other things that are out there like oh like some of the new pupil accounting types of things and some of um like the decisions that were made on state and federal money in terms of how um, how it's distributed. So I, I found that pretty interesting. I know it's this next one in the winter that they're always trying to do something that's right. a little and bit different. they've even thought about moving it. Like, so it was supposed to be in January and we kind of delayed it to um, maybe February or March to see just because so that way weather is not an issue mm -hmm. as much, but it could still be, you never know. But the next meeting I have is in December, so you guys have till December to give me some ideas. Okay. Or mm -hmm. if, if, even if you have them now, then I can at least send them and then they can look for speakers yeah. or we can yeah. all email each other. That there was, Port Huron wanted diverse, like a speak, speaker just on diversity, but it doesn't affect all of us right. in, you know, like... like the lady from Memphis was like, yeah, we don't have that yeah. issue. Like diversity you know. of student population? Yes. Or, okay. and, yeah. and just, you know, some of the stuff with what was happening in Marysville with their city council. Mm -hmm. You know, all that kind of stuff. So he was more wanting that, but then there was a lot of the schools that are out this <coughs> week that were like, yeah, we don't really, it doesn't affect us. So I don't think you would draw as many people. They're just looking to, you know. It might be nice to get somebody they're usually very boring. <laughs> I, it, I, it just, Don't soften it. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> uh, well, I'm never in the middle of the road, uh, yeah. one or the other. But maybe if they would discuss something that RISA prov not necessarily provides, but what the um, the schooling up there, what we can look forward to kids who do not want to be in a regular school setting what is offered up there so like what kevin shares with yeah. us when he comes here but deeper dive. exactly thoughts. but but put it out and make it a an interesting way where not everybody on especially new board members from the different um from our county would not know exactly what's going on we used to go up there Take a trip Didn't yep. and look at up and look at everything and whatever. We haven't been doing that probably for ten years or more. But it would just be nice to know what they provide and what is out there for our schools. Mm -hmm. You know, like um, a walking tour or something to go see. Yeah, well, even, even I mean, if they don't they even do make that, the meal, they you know, the culinary arts make right, the meal, right, so you yeah. can get to exactly. taste that. Or, you know, I mean, probably yeah, that that tech know. building in itself is pretty cool to yeah. kind of do a tour through. And, Right, and if we can't take a tour or something of it, if they would get somebody to explain what they have and what's yeah, out there, that's great, yeah. you know. But they very well might be willing to do a tour and that kind of stuff, and yeah. you know. But I mean, it would just be really very email. interesting because I, I know there were. I mean, yeah, it's, it's minor now, yeah, like but they used to like yeah, yeah. have a program where they made hangers, and you were watching these kids making hangers and. Yep. They were shipping them out and taking them wherever, you mm -hmm. know. But I mean, I didn't know that. Yeah. And then we toured 
the mechanical part where they were repairing cars and stuff and yep. it was really very interesting cool, yeah. to know what they have provided be a very up there, good idea. you know so that might be if something just different send them some ideas and if you guys come up with anything or something you want more information on my, let oh. me know my oh. others oh, oh sorry go ahead. No, I'm take a minute <laughs> um, i just want to know more about I was really looking forward to going because I want us to really find out more about the legislative issues, and that's why I'm going to look on the MASB site and probably get a hold of who I need to. to Do you find get out. the emails from Jennifer every week? Yeah, Jennifer Smith. I don't know. Yeah. That's who it was. Okay. That yeah. Came. yeah, you should be getting it. Because, I mean, because she doesn't really give you, you any information, sure you're she just rattles it all off. I, um, she was very good. I went to the awards, the induction ceremony, and the academic awards because I was able to make those. So I just brought, and it's been in my car with a dog and coffee, so <laughs> I have stuff on it. But I brought some for you guys, so you have the students' names and their accomplishments. Um, and just kind of like along with what Ryan was saying, you know, these kids, they work really hard. They're moving more than I am. Their every minute of their day is taken up. So I think we need to we need to be there for them and support them. And I understand that the test scores might not be where everybody wants them to be, but I guarantee, just by looking at these kids, as much as we want to see what's going wrong, that's what's going right, is what these guys are also doing, because they've been with these guys, mm -hmm. and they've been with their parents, and people have to care. So, on a state level, I just think we need to find out legislatively, like you were saying, for instance, with these test scores, way it's broken down by need and ability right. we don't have those rankings from the other schools so I just don't think it's fair to compare our school to other schools we should just be looking within and doing the best we can because the kids are showing us that they can do it no. so I just yeah I want to get that information I think it's important that we make it a priority to change whatever we need to with the state testing so it reflects equally for every school Good. Thank you. Point. Uh, the only thing I'll, I'll add is relative to the, um, the the potential topics, right? If if there's topics, Al, that you see the superintendents, because you collaborate quite a bit yep. across, right, the superintendent group, right? If, so if there's topics like you know, like what, what we were just talking about, or if there's other things that you guys are, you know, whether it's like the, the, the you know, the, the special support services or, or other things that are topical that you think would be yep. good to have more cross board collaboration, like maybe you could suggest sure. uh, some thoughts too. Yep. If, if there is. And I gotta, I, I meet with that group on uh, Friday of this week, so we can talk yeah. a little bit about some of that too, because um, yeah, no, I, think, I think that would be good. And like Sharon said, some of the topics in the past that those have been kind of dry. And I, and I think they, you know, credit to Kevin, I think they sense that. And so um, I know they do want to get, um, you know, they're looking to get more participation. So I think they're willing to change up a little bit how they do things. Yeah, it was pretty lightly attended. Yeah, yeah, this one was probably as, right, as small as I've seen. People yeah. RSVP and didn't show up. Yeah, well, they had a lot of people too there that they had mm -hmm. like some, um, you know, there was only superintendent wise to, you know, me and Kenny and right. and yeah. uh, Suzanne from uh, East That's China. one of the first times I've seen East China show up at any At all, yeah. That Maybe was, they should I mean, make they it don't mandatory. even usually come to our meetings, or the St. Clair County meetings at this, all. They don't send yeah. us a representative or anything. Yeah. Do you, what yeah. frequency do you meet as a. Meet that four group? times a year. Four times a year. Outside of, is that one of the meetings or no? No. Okay. Have no, we period. had a meeting in September. We have a meeting in December. I don't know the other ones because I'm yeah. new, so I only have two. <laughs> yeah. So, last thought on that topic is: as you see things that you, you come up in your quarterly meetings, if you'd like us to be there to listen in or to absorb. Yeah, know, it's it, they're like it. lunch meetings, so it's oh, really like yeah. at a weird time. So it's like at 11:30 mm -hmm. on a Tuesday, and it works for me because I work right there it takes me five ten minutes you know it's closer for me to go there and then come back home you know so I just take my lunch early and go yeah, yeah. but those are very lightly attended too there's sometimes only like five of us mm -hmm. you know Kevin and Kim and a few people three from Risa and two <laughs> right. others yeah yeah yeah, yeah. very good
Okay. Anything else? Yeah, I got one more. Yep. Um, last month I got a little hot with some scores and I let my temper fly a little bit and uh, I talked to Al about it and we got a couple things straight and, and I talked to Ryan and apologized to him for going after him on some things that he really didn't have control of. Um, but I'm not going to apologize for that CT scores. I think they still need to come up. And uh, I got some of my views out to Al. So I apologize <coughs> to everybody in this room if I offended or embarrassed anybody. But I'm going to speak my mind. So. Well, and, and, and I think there's, you know, a conversation that Ray and I had. I think we found, you know, kind of found some ideas on how we can and even speaking at Chuck's idea of um, getting you guys information throughout the year as opposed to a one one time snapshot because like I said we live it um, we do discuss that stuff throughout the year and we do you know continue to research and review throughout the year but you guys don't know that and you don't mm -hmm. see that process so I think for us making you aware of not only what we talk about but also how it translates into the classroom. And I had talked to you guys a little bit about a format that, and you'll see next month we're gonna start, and we're gonna start right with the math scores or with the math curriculum and the math people at the high school because, you know, quite frankly, that's the area right now where we right. need the most work in. Mm -hmm. So um, they'll be presenting next month for us. Um, and, and, you know, good good for them to answer some questions or if you have questions along the way, but they'll, talk about the strategies that they're implementing now and how that's going to go and um you know i in all that i i do think it's again it's important that you guys you know for us like i said it becomes one of these things where we talk about it all the time so it's you know second nature a little bit to us but maybe we need to give more information to the board and so that's what we intend to do moving forward yeah and i think it's it's positive i mean that the silver lining is we're talking and it's a topic we're all excited to shift to, right? We're tired of talking about the leaking roofs that's <laughs> behind us. <laughs> yeah. So we can uh, Plus it's easier move to forward. To other parents and community yeah. members sure. when you have. If you guys are aware of I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yep. Cool. Thanks, Rick. Yeah. All right, superintendent's report. Yep. A few items for you. Um, our website is, I would say, about, uh, I'm going to give it a good 90. 5% ready to go, meaning um, we just have a couple other areas right now where we're um, adding some pictures, we're adding, changing a few things. Like I said, I just didn't want to put it out there when it's not really up and running. I mean, there's going to be some things on there, obviously. We'll get it up there, and then teachers on their individual pages can make updates and some of that type of stuff. But I wanted to make it in the site's a nice looking site. Um, it really is. You'll see it. We're, I, I plan to launch, I'm hoping, end of the week. We'll is, actually have it out. Is there a URL you could flip us, like a soft yeah. launch or something? Yeah. Okay, here, go to this one. And Absolutely. I'll send that along to you. I, I could send that along to you tomorrow. Um, I'll make Maybe sure. Maybe a to, you know, presentation or something. Yep. Uh, for the board and, and, you know, just so we see it, because when I go to the website, the, I see the things that irritate me, like <laughs> teachers that have been retired for four years, right. they're, they're still in there and right. stuff like that. And, it's having the yep. staff and, uh, their pages. Right. And, and I've talked to, I, I've talked to uh, the, you know, now that we, have invested in this new tool and and it's something that because i do believe that now that's where um you know the public goes to get their information that's right. probably the first place they start i've talked to the administrative team about um we are gonna you know be it quarterly or whatever the case is we are going to go through and keep it up to date that way we're um you know we're not falling behind where we have that dated information because that is a turn off to the public right. they go on and see something like that and assume that it's not a good source for information mm -hmm. so i want this to be a user-friendly thing where the public can actually go there and get pertinent information so that'll yeah, be the goal which was an for like a year after the job. Yeah. <laughs> um eef tickets uh out and selling those Make sure uh, if you need some more, go see Jan or Crystal. They have them for you. Uh, kind of in that 
regard we have uh, the EEF uh, grant group that's going to meet where we kind of go through all the applications that people have put in um, and determine who gets uh, who gets what and that committees will meet uh, I believe it's first week of November we have a date scheduled or that's the date we are looking at so we can't do it at the same time every year so um, things they could use in their classroom uh, the special ed interventionist position so we did meet with the uh, Risa came down and Melissa and uh, Dina to check from Risa and I uh, conducted some interviews um, and had a bunch of good actually I should say had about three or four that we thought were uh, very good one of them an internal candidate um, Anne Marie Dewsbury <laughs> and after talking after going through the process and taking in um, Risa's um, what they felt would be a good move for the district um, we did decide on Anne Marie for that position that she's ready to go and um, has the skills needed now of course the downside to that is Anne Marie's a special ed teacher in the district so there's the shell game now of trying to do this and trying to do this in October or November which isn't ideal for hiring um, however uh, Mary Gillis who has come to us from Fraser a while back and has a special education background uh, had some conversations with Melissa and has agreed to go into Anne Marie's spot which in turn leaves another vacancy in the kindergarten classroom however our, our history has been that those positions um, are more readily findable than um, a special ed one so that's kind of where we stand right now we do have that posted out uh, the good news is everyone's been pretty patient and even with working with the Risa that we're um, we're not going to rush into anything we've got time to make some of these moves but um, at the same point we know that we need to um, you know get Melissa some help in that building with that specialist so we're plugging holes over there right now so that's kind of where we're at with that um, so I'll keep you posted on how those hirings are continuing uh, December 17th 6 o'clock is Wayne Wright coming down to do their next session of Neola stuff um, the unfortunate part of that is it does back up the the 16th uh, our board meeting and then the 17th that meeting so it's back-to-back -back nights but then we get a nice Christmas break so <laughs> we can relax a little bit that's then. at six uh, six o'clock yep and then I did, like I mentioned next month we will begin with some uh, presentations for the board I am going to skip the December meeting just for the fact that that one's long with my evaluation and it's already quite a lengthy meeting so we will not have a presentation that month we'll continue it back in uh, January so we'll go November then January and then and we have two meetings in January we have the organizational meeting up that we have at the beginning of the year there and that one's usually just for that purpose of um, doing those types of things a separate meeting but yes we do have two and then finally the last part is um, the Michigan Department of Education came through again with robotics grant for um, the district they've they've kind of made a commitment to fund this and so um, Sebastian and I will be getting together probably this week to fill out the necessary paperwork on that um, I think it's roughly about nine thousand dollars I think is what we end up getting from the state and then of course the district matches some of that as well so um, it, it's good to know that they are again supporting that program and as it grows hopefully they continue to fund it at a reasonable rate I think that's it okay all right thank you any visitors and requests none none all right action items our first action item is for the audit um, since I got to participate in the, the process I'll, I'll make a motion that the Board of Education accept the 2018-19 audit report is presented and submitted by the auditing firm of Lewis and Knopf or moved and supported any comments Good oh, job, Dorothy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice yep. job. Very nice. Great job. Thank you. It was nice. I mean, it felt like for, for those, like, so I came and got to get interviewed and stuff, and they had a SWAT team off in one of the rooms, right, <laughs> where they were just kind of like base camp, and they said, it's easy at Elginac. We just show up. We just got all the stuff. And we go bang, bang, bang. Two days in and out. use a portal, which is 
great because then they can do it remotely before they get here. Mm -hmm. So it gives them more time, yeah. actually. Yeah, they have a lot of the stuff ahead of time too, right? Yeah. I mean, so. Yeah, it was good. All right. Thank you. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that passes. And the last item is uh, an internet switch purchase for network replacement. Any motions? I'll make a motion the Board of Education approve the purchase of Cisco network equipment from Prestito in the amount of 1000 er, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we wished. Yeah, 1, 900, wait, I don't know. 1,900,000,942,452. Support. Moved and supported. I and sent that information out to you, hopefully. Um, I, my explanation, I was trying like heck to explain what, why we did what we, what, what we did, but basically what it came down to was um, based on the items that we actually are going to need, even though the one bit appeared higher, when you look at, in Dorothy went item by item on the stuff that we're actually gonna need, um, that bit actually came in a little bit lower, and so um, that was the one that we tended to go with. Evan, anything at all to add on that? It, Nope, good to go. Okay. Work on that. We're going to start doing uh, December. Is that We're that? Sure I get it done during Christmas break. Okay, great. So and that's hopefully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we did, as I, as I mentioned, we also did get the federal funding for that, which I think was 60% of it. So wow. um, that was nice. Yeah, because. We've not done dealings with this particular company before, have we? Yeah. Have we? Uh, they used to be called NetTech. Oh, really? Uh, Presidio. So that, that, that switch happened a couple years ago. But yeah, we've worked with them for a while. We bought our last round of systems. Okay, mm -hmm. that's good then. Yeah. That's interesting. So 60%? Yeah, 60%. Covered? Well, and then free, free SmartNet on top of that? Yep. It's pretty cool. We lucked that's out. That's good, yeah. yep. All right, anything else? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And that passes. And I'll make a motion to adjourn at 7.52 p.m. Support. Moved and supported. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that passes. Have a good night.